bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning and we declare that he is the Lord and Savior even today he reigns forever and evermore the Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord that is why we are gathered together this afternoon that we may receive the word the word of God that proceed from his mouth that we may be able to live by even in our current situation, brethren. Our bishop is ready to minister the word of God to us, and we thank God for this opportunity. We are coming live from Apostolic Faith Church, Bahati, Nairobi, Kenya, and we thank God because of his faithfulness. Prepare your heart, also be ready with your Bible, and of course, we encourage you to write the revelation and the prophecy that the Lord is going to release today, and then as we welcome our bishop, we promise that God is going to bless you in a mighty, mighty way. Let us pray as we welcome our bishop. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you this afternoon. We bless you because you are the Lord who reigneth in power and also in majesty. And even today, Lord, you, have re you are releasing your word unto us that we may be able to live by it because that is according to your word. Father, we thank you for your servant as he comes over to minister. You are the Lord. We pray that you bestow a blessing upon him and he may become a blessing to the church of Christ. We thank you and worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us now welcome our bishop to minister the word of God. Welcome, bishop. God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank Amen. You. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. We, we have met again to share the word of God. I'm Bishop Peter Gatimo. Christ is my savior. Um... We have a, a conviction and a commitment that is so co complete and absolute. Christ is the only hope of glory. People may move around, but very soon the systems of men will be exhausted. And all men will land at the feet of Christ. So that the word of God will be fulfilled. The word of God that says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, uh, we are reaching out to you from Bahati, Nairobi, and we, are, and we thank God that you have subscribed to our YouTube, and please invite others for blessing. If you can invite other 10, 20 people, and they are healed, that's better. We don't preach away from the word of God. We don't preach maybe some enticing philosophies or insights. We just preach truth derived from the word of God. Truth that is derived from the might of God. And that's why people who really desire substance and desire solid food uh, will find refuge and hope in what we teach. And I hope we will get so many with the thus for God. Our topic, this lesson number five, your vision must win. Your vision must win. Last time we had a lot of, we shared a lot. Your vision must win because God will handle obstacles. If you have faith to allow God to handle obstacles, now, sometimes the natural is so clear more than the faith. The eye that sees the natural becomes more clear or more practical than the eye that sees the supernatural. For instance, if you go to the book of the Bible, when Israel were crossing the Red Sea, the Red Sea, you realize that even if it were you and me, that would be the issue. Because the Bible says in verse 10, uh, <clears throat> verse 9, So the Egyptians pursued them, all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, his horsemen and his army, and overtook them. So the issue is, Israel were not a trained army. They had just come out of slavery. God was leading them to Mount Holeb, 
where he was to organize them, give them law, give them guidance of how to form administrative and social structures. And um, they, they didn't have, they just had Moses leading them. And now such people were quite vulnerable in this manner. The fellow did not believe that through the, these people are out completely out of sight and out of slavery. And one of the things that we need to know, if God has delivered you from drug addiction, or has delivered you from immorality, fornication, from sex, we can do sex addiction. There are people who just want to, you are so much addicted to immorality that you can do it in all forms until, until maybe you get drained, attacked, or you have an, a, a, a new man, a, a, a sickness, or maybe you, you lose some strength. There are people who can do anything. You are addicted to some a direction and your mind is not normal because you can't have such addiction and have a normal mind that God gave. And sometimes when you want to come out, that's when your body, your feelings, whatever direction you are taken, you know you've taken a direction and you're used to it. Your habits are formed. Your feelings are ad adhered to that. So when you want to change, there's a rough reaction. Even from the spirit demons in charge of that kind of lifestyle. The reaction is so clear that it is hard for you to subdue, to believe in deliverance. You know, when you are dealing with an addicted person, maybe alcoholic, within two or three days, the reactions... Eh? The symptoms, the withdrawal symptoms are so powerful, so powerful, more than faith. That's a problem. It's like these people are now almost out of Egypt. And Pharaoh want to release the last powerful reaction against it. Because all, can you imagine, all the horsemen and all the chariots, that fellow had in the army followed the Egyptians, uh, followed the Israelites. All his horsemen and his army, not only following or pursuing, the Bible says they actually overtook them. The magnitude, the strength of the army speaks. Ah, the, the fact that, you know, somebody can follow you, but you are far from from being attacked. Somebody can pursue you, but far behind you. But now, besides being far behind, now that space of being far was no longer there. The, they overtook them. Camping by the sea beside whatever. And when God was 10, then when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes. They lifted their eyes to who? To the army, to the threat, to the size, to the to look at them. You know, in most cases, when you are at a crisis or attack, sometimes it's hard to raise your faith unless you are very prayerful and alert spiritually. Naturally, you are forced to look into the problem, the enemy, the pain, the attack, the medical reports. The evidence, that's what you focus on. And, and, and it enters your mind to an extent that the reality of God never surface. You know, the medical report, the reality of attack, the truth, the tactics of the enemy are so true and practical that the reality of God being involved in such a battle never comes to your mind. This is a truth. This is true. And that's why these people lifted their eyes and behold, Egyptians marched after them. So they were afraid. And the children of Israel, if you check, they cried out to the Lord and they felt like the Lord is very far. The cry was exhausted. The enemy is so real 
that you don't even know how can God now intervene. On the ground, in the world, the physical is so real that you feel like God is so much far in heaven and you wonder how God you come from heaven because naturally you think God is very far from the earth. You wonder how God you come down and how long you take and how much faith you need to rise up to apply. You find the process is so complicated. Before you do that, the enemy have killed you. That's the, the kind of uh, imagination, whatever the evaluation or the standard that they used. And that's why they cut to the Lord, but immediately they turned to the reality. They said to Moses, Moses, verse 11, because there were no graves in Egypt, there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? So, there's another issue. The reality of the life of slavery came up again. We wish we remained there. I wish I remained in that marriage and maybe die. My children have taken care of me. That's what people think. Maybe I would have remained in the countryside with my parents, however poor they were. Maybe I died there. There should be some mercy. That's, you know, people after reaching out to businesses and battles of life when you get so discouraged you revert back to where you came from and you feel i would rather stay there rest and not do anything but have some peace and please the life we are living in now require deliverance require deliverance require an extra maybe you cannot call it secondary deliverance you are the initial deliverance from egypt but you need another secondary one whereby you need to prove to the, to, the, to, the, to, to, to the enemy that you are actually crossing over to where God called you. It happens in business. Anybody who starts business, challenges come. When you start business, you are so happy, you are not problem, you are stalked and whatever. It, for you to apply and get the market and actualize the market, there's, you don't just wait. There is some battle you need to win. Battle in several areas. One, personally, you need to change. You can't stay the same way and cross the Red Sea. You can't stay the same way when you start a business and you win battle in the marketplace. You need to change. A woman who starts a business in the street thinks you will not be the same when you get to the street. You need to adapt. Change yourself. In the street, things are not cool. In the house, things were cool and not, not organized. In the street, you can be attacked. In the street, your neighbors are competing. In the street, maybe your neighbor has more better things than you. You can't just sit back and win. And that's why some people lose business. Because you go out there, when you came out of the house, you are alone with your family. But out there, you are multitude, people competing, skills, better things. So you need to rise up, change from who you are and be totally market result oriented. I'm now to cross Red Sea. I need to change from who I was when I was, from what I thought, when what I perceived when I was a slave and change to be a person who is turning around to be a winner. Number two, you also need to believe in the reality of God, the qualities of God, God cannot lose. God must have a better way. God cannot be number two. God cannot be a failure. The God I serve. And that's why when, when, uh, when, when Job was in severe pain and, and all over the body he was, he was really, really tortured and everything had disappeared and he had nothing around, he said, I know my redeemer lives. You know what that means? You put another gear. You apply another strength. I want to release the truth of my God to this reality. My Redeemer lives. His might for me. Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 31, If God be for us, who can be against us? And Paul says, I'm persuaded that he who began good work in us will continue. That is Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. 
He who began good works with us will complete it. We will continue with it until the day of the Lord. Eh? The Bible says now we focus. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 and 2. We put down every weight and every sin that entangle us. And now we run the race set before us. Focusing on Jesus who is the author and the perfecter of our faith. There is an area in faith where you need to perfect yourself. You can't win if you remain the same way. And number two, you can't win if you don't apply God, force your mind and your heart and your feelings to accept the reality of God so that you can declare like Job, my Redeemer lives. You can declare like Paul, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 12, I know him whom I believed in and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. I say you must make your vision win. Red Sea is not simple. Because you have threat ahead of you and you have threat behind you. The threat behind you can cause death. The threat ahead of you can cause death. And yet you are in God's perfect will. Then God must have way. The reality of the enemy is so evident, so clear in your mind. The reality of the crisis or the threat ahead of you is so real. What senses can perceive is so clear. The army is here. They are more equipped. And they have come to kill us. Red Sea is here. We can't jump into the water. You die. For you to apply the reality of God there, it requires that you be, let me say something. A man of God will always keep fire. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Let me talk about the fire. If you read John chapter 16 verse 13, the Bible says, when the spirit of truth comes upon you, he will guide you into the truth. He will guide you into the truth. He will not speak of himself. But he will speak of what he hears from the throne. The Bible says, and he will also show you the things that are coming. So he will, he will introduce in us several ways, several things. One, when the Bible talks about, he will reveal to you all the truth. That is revelation, word of knowledge, word of wisdom. When he says he will show you what is ahead, that is prophetic dimension. The Bible says he was, he is Acts 2 verse 17, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young people will see vision. We have a prospective dimension. Faith has a prospective dimension. It's visionary. So the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit will raise a standard. If you go to the book of Isaiah chapter 59, the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit raising a standard instead of I with the drawing instead of I declaring that it's impossible the Holy Spirit will raise a standard for me and we need to understand the scriptures uh, that we uh, that we, we, we what the Bible says about the Holy Spirit we've already seen that in that is Isaiah 59 let's go to Isaiah 59 let's go Isaiah 59 let's go there quickly by God's grace it's 59. What the Bible, the Holy Spirit will raise a standard. He will not cause you to withdraw. He will not cause you to go back uh, to suffering. Mm -hmm. He has a standard for you. That is Isaiah 59 verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west. And his glory is glory from the rising of the sun when the enemy comes like a flood. Can you hear that? Enemy coming like a flood. Somebody has decided to overwhelm you with insults. Somebody has decided to finish you. Circumstances are overwhelming. Enemy coming like a flood. We need to know how to live in the fire of the Holy Ghost. So that when the enemy comes like a flood, my heart is awake. My heart is on fire. My mind is awake. And there's a chance that the Holy Ghost will raise a standard against him. Let's, let the Holy Ghost raise a standard. Why? Because 
your vision must win. And that's why in the Red Sea, as these people are complaining, there are two things that happen. They could only be rescued by the vision bearer. I want to say this. A family, there's, there, are, there are times in a church department, a church branch, a church region, a family, a clan, a business can only be rescued by the vision bearer. Vision bearer. You know, the, the Bible says, as we read in that chapter 14, verse 13, look at Moses. And Moses said to people, Moses, not a group, a person, the vision bearer, the prophet. I want you to become the prophet of your house, prophet of your business, prophet of the church, prophet of women in the church, prophet of youth in the church, prophet of teenagers in the church, prophet of a business, prophet of a group. There should be a Moses somewhere. This anointing is needed. If a house has no Moses, if a church has no Moses, if a church department has no Moses, if a, a, a group has no Moses, then it's very easy for a group to perish. People require leadership. We can't just have people lead themselves. Things will be difficult. They'll just speak like this. The Israel spoke. Let's go back to Egypt. We would rather die. There are people that requires a vision bearer who will push them, push them until they see the glory. When they see the glory now, they will possess the vision by themselves. There is a space in church leadership. There is a space in ministerial leadership whereby the vision bearer must be awake in the spirit, in the vision, so that when the enemy comes like a flood, in the vision bearer, the Holy Ghost will raise a standard and the vision bearer will speak like Moses and say, please stop making noise, stop making noise, stop complaining, come out of fear. Any church, any family must close Red Sea at a certain point. There are times when you as a vision bearer, you are a woman, you have to start farm. Otherwise, if you reason to your children, you fail. As a father, as a bishop, as a pastor, you need to start firm. Otherwise, if you reason to the rest, you fail. They are talking about the evidence of the past. While us, you are talking about the truth of the vision and the God of the vision. They are talking about what they are used to. One time I introduced the church, I said, this church will raise millionaires. An old man said to me, new past bishop, don't you know where you have come, we have come from? I said, I'm not talking about where we have come from. I'm talking about what God is saying now to me as your bishop. This is going to happen. It could not be discussed in the church board. They could only allow it to work out as God has said. And that's why Moses said to these people, one, if you check verse 13 and 14, there are two positions. One, even before the God spoke, Moses spoke as a vision bearer. If you check, there are two statements in this area. The statement of Moses as vision bearer and the statement of God as the owner of people. Moses as the vision bearer said, do not be afraid, verse 13. Start still and see salvation of the Lord, which will accomplish for you today. For these Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. That is Moses speaking as a vision bearer who has the spirit of God and the spirit of God has raised a standard. What do you mean? A vision bearer must produce a standard. Tell people, although you are crying, the Holy Ghost has raised a standard in me and this is what I know. My Redeemer lives. Our God cannot desert us. We are going to purchase that land. We are going to live. Even before God speaks, the, the, the vision bearer says the Holy Ghost has a standard in me. And then that gives room to God, to the Holy Ghost to speak. Then if you go to verse 15, then Bible, verse 13 says, and Moses said to people. But verse 15 says, and the Lord said to Moses, 
Verse 13 is the voice of the vision bearer. Verse 15 is the voice of God to the vision bearer. Bible says, why do you cry to me? Tell the truth of Israel, go to go forward. But lift up your rod. Stretch out your heart over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. There are two significant signs. One, lift the rod, stretch it out, and the Israel will cross over the Red Sea on a dry ground. And if you see, the Bible says, right, and the age of the Lord who went before, before the cup of Israel moved and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before them and stood behind them. So it came between the camp of Egyptians and the camp of Israel. That's another sign. Now, the enemy are still pursuing them in the dry highway in the sea. And now the Pira and the angel are behind them to separate them the enemy. Uh -huh. Then the Moses stretched out the head over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night. And made the sea into, and made the sea into dry land and whatever, whatever. Children of Israel went, but Egyptians, verse 23, Egyptians pursued, but what happened? They perished in the sea. Aha. Uh -huh. And the Bible talks about other details. Very, very powerful. But 25 says, and he took off, and God took off their chariot wheels. So that so that they drove them with the difficulty. And they just said, Let us free from the face of Israel. Aha. Uh -huh. And the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your head of the sea, and waters may come back to Egyptians. And their chariots. And Moses did that. The Bible says, the waters returned to its full depth while Egyptians were falling into it. So the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Then the waters returned and covered the chariot horsemen and they perished. Now, do you know something? After this, those who talked about Egypt, slavery, had a new song. And Miriam led that a great praise talking about the great deliverance. Remember, before this miracle, the vision bearer saw it. But those people who led discovered how God can work. What does it mean? There are people that need to be given birth to again. You need to produce people again. If you are a leader, you need to produce people by your anointing. Produce people by the works of your God. Go ahead. Don't remain among people and talking like them. One of the problems I've seen in the church are bishops, pastors, elders, leaders who remain among people and talk like them. There are times you need to go ahead of people and talk like God. And then God, you honor your statement and people, you discover two things. You are a servant of God and your God is true. And the leadership of Moses after Red Sea was unique. People knew this is a man of God. People also knew the God who called us is with us. And therefore, your vision must win if you walk like Moses through Red Sea. And I release this, uh, this anointing on you that from today you bishop, you pastor, don't wait for people. We are used to discussions. We are used to opinions. It's good to have that discussion, but there are Areas that vision bearer, the vision bearer should reap people across Red Sea. Closing Red Sea did not require a church committee. Closing Red Sea does not require a church board. It requires a visionary who has friendship with God, speak and prophesy, and God moves his children. In Jesus' name, you as a father, receive this favor. You as a single mother leading children, receive it. You as a leader of a company, receive it. You as a leader of the church, receive it. I release this calling and anointing on you. Receive it in Christ we pray.